So for those of you who haven't seen the inside of a Tesla without its frunk inside of it, not trunk, frunk, it's in the front and it's a trunk, it's a frunk. Uh, let's look a little bit uh, more at the air conditioning. I've explained some of this before, but we have a condenser over there with a fan. We have a condenser over here with a fan. We have a crossover that's coming from that condenser going over to this condenser. And then we come out at the liquid line right there that I explained in the previous video that is kinked over. It's really jammed over from where the ferrule is and pushing it up into the frame and against the motor of the three-way valve. Now let's take a look at this three-way valve that I just mentioned. This is a water three-way valve. This is just like if you were on a commercial or a residential or a refrigeration glycol unit to a beer cooler or something, multiple beer coolers or, or anything like that. A glycol loop system, a geothermal. You have your three-way valves. But look at this. We have another glycol three-way valve over there. I think there's another one. One, two, there's another one somewhere. I am missing one. And why can't I spot it now? One, two, okay, here's a motor. Here's, oh, here it goes. Here's the other glycol. Here's the other three-way valve right here. Here's an electric pump. Here's an electric pump. This is so they could all pump the cool, chilled glycol to different components of the vehicle for heating or cooling. Our compressor on the Tesla. You might not be able to spot it by looking at it, but it's underneath my uh, unit right there. It has a sound blanket on it, so you can't see it. This is all sound insulating on here around the compressor to deaden the sound for the passenger compartment so you don't hear the spinning of the electric compressor. Idle, isolated on rubber bushings. Uh, years earlier, I remember when they brought them out and I went, first went to Tesla in one of their showrooms. It, the compressor used to be mounted down on the frame back right underneath where the passenger feet were on the frame down low now they they started putting them up higher on this model this is a pd 85 s or whatever it is you have a expansion valve i'm looking at it right now you guys might be able but right down in this area right here there's a second expansion valve there's another expansion valve system to chill the glycol so the three-way valves and the motor and the pumps divert the coolant after it has absorbed heat to get rid of it to this plate down here. Let's see if I can get, get you guys to see. Right, right here is the expansion valve. Uh, let's see if you can see my, you can see my finger wiggle right there. This right here is the expansion valve. It's your H block type, regular old expansion valve that's been used since the late 60s. Going on to a plate heat exchanger that has refrigerant passing through it in one direction and it has glycol coolant passing in the other direction to get rid of the heat out of the glycol that is absorbed from its components. And the glycol radiator is up here in the front through forced air. Remember the condensers, the heat exchangers for the condensers are located here off to the sides. The glycol loop is this big long thing. The glycol loop condenser goes all the way from right about here, big old long thing, and it goes all the way over to the other side and it ends can't really see it sorry I don't have my light on on here but it ends over here so it's a pretty long guy and that is uh, the pumping and the three-way valve switching on the Tesla that gets chilled by the electric compressor through a second expansion valve down here had a heater cleaner because to cool off the passenger compartment that's up there at those lines right there and another expansion valve located. Can you see that there? Let me zoom in. Come on, zoom. There we go. You can see the top and you can see the thermal and uh, you can see the, damn it. I'm, I'm lost for words up there. But uh, you can see that H block expansion valve. 
back there and that's for the passenger compartment. I would really like to see one of these stripped down more so I can completely go over the entire system. I guess I gotta take a visit to a Tesla uh, place, do a video on one of their stripped down Teslas, hopefully to show you uh, a completed Tesla. I did that many, many years ago. I can't remember if I ever posted it, but I actually went into a Tesla showroom when they first came out with the first S models and went over a vehicle and I, I posted uh, some short videos I think I did. I remember taking the videos. I remember archiving them uh, when Tesla first came out and putting them in my hard drive. But I do not remember if I ever posted them on YouTube. And uh, that was way back when. All right, guys. Uh, I'm doing, a, I have the vacuum off right now. I was performing a vacuum decay to see how much moisture or refrigerant was trapped into oil. And um, I still have to go down for a while. so. I'll do another 30 minutes and come back and see see where it goes uh, because I'm trying to get it down and hold down below 500 microns. Getting down to 500 microns means nothing. Being able to hold below 500 after you turn off the vacuum, that's when it tells you you actually did some work. Getting there is easy. Holding there after you turn off the vacuum, that proves whether or not you have done your job. All right, guys. I'll see you later. And don't forget your nylog on your fittings.